Hello, and welcome to another edition of Paranormal Activity and Mysterious Stories. Let me give you a quick preview of what I got coming up in this video. Uh, the first is a sighting of a UFO near Wiltshire at the Stonehenge. Uh, let's see. This is an old case from 2015. This woman saw these strange lights in the sky, and she claimed that, they, that it was the size of a football field. Also, a video uploaded by Tom DeLong in his Instagram post. Um, an article about um, a scientist, Dr. Norman Bergram, who wrote a book called The uh, Ringmakers of Saturn. And he claims that based on the data that the rings of Saturn, or some of the rings of Saturn, are, act are actually being made or maintained by giant UFOs. Some as much as 5,000 miles long. Well, here's one, 7,000 miles long, actually. Um, a, a video which seems to show a Bigfoot back in the distance. Yeah, way, way out here, there's a guy walking around and they think it's a Bigfoot. Um, also, an article, NASA accepts and confirms the existence of UFOs throughout history. Actually, I've done a, um, a video about this before. I've mentioned it in one of my other videos, but, you know, it recently came up, so I guess I'll mention it again. But um, there's been a lot of reports of um, what, you know, what, what, what today we would consider UFOs, and apparently NASA d did a whole bunch of research on it. And then last is just um, some images that show flight characteristics and uh, shapes of UFOs that have been reported. So let's go to the first one here. Now this is a UFO sighting near Wiltshire at Stonehenge. Yeah, you can see that right there. But anyway, that's it, you know, I, I, I can't play the whole video, but uh, I'll leave a link in the description. You can check it out. Let's go to the next video. This is from 2015 from Olive Branch, I think Mississippi that is. But there was actually a, uh, a news story on this and the reporter mentioned that uh, the woman claimed that this thing was the size of a football field whatever these lights are. Yeah, you know, these. some of these videos are definitely hard to. Um, yeah, hard, hard to make something out, but you know, there's, there's definitely something there. I don't think you can deny that. Now, whether, you know, it's a real alien craft, that I think um, would have to, you know, you'd have to spend some more time taking a look at this video. But I'll leave a link, and if you want to do that, you can definitely do that. Uh, let's see, this is from Tom DeLong's Twitter account, I think. But you know, here's, again, this is another one of those um, videos that shows UFOs around oceans and lakes. You know, this video here, I'm, again, I'm not seeing a, a UFO maneuver. That looks like something a drone could do. You know, if this thing shoots away at, you know, at some incredible speed, then I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be more convinced that it's a, it's an alien craft. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. That was a, that's what I call a UFO maneuver. Let's watch that. Uh, yeah. That's a, then it came back. I don't know. Is that a replay or something? Hmm. Down here, it's saying it's a CGI made by the guy that made the Russian UFO glass videos. Yeah, that, you know, that. Let's. 
that taking off and then coming back real quick. Oh, I think it took off and then it stopped right here and then came back over here. You know, it, yeah, people are claiming that this is CGI, but you know, there have been other legitimate videos that um, have, or people have said that it's, it's fake when I'm pretty sure they weren't fake. I don't know, some of these videos are so hard to tell though. But this now, I actually saw an interview done with um, Carrie Cassidy did interview this guy, Norman Bergram. All UFO and alien enthusiasts will have heard of Dr. Norman Bergram, a scientist and engineer who worked at NASA, that is, in the aerospace industry and author of the book, The Ringmakers of Saturn. In his book, he states that there are huge extraterrestrial spaceships parked between Saturn's rings and that they can become dangerous for the Earth and the rest of the solar system. Dr. Bergram worked for 12 years as a researcher at the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, NACA, uh, the predecessor of NASA's Ames Research Center, and spent nearly 13 years in service with the Lockheed Missile and Space Company, author of two books and numerous articles, Bergram wrote The Ringmakers of Saturn in 1986. In that book, Bergram analyzes photographs of Saturn's rings taken by the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 spacecrafts in 1980 and 1981. He then details his theory that the rings were formed by giant electromagnetic vehicles that could be controlled by intelligent beings. He claims that 7,000 mile long elliptical ships orbit and are orbiting Saturn within the rings, but they are not visible because they possess a cloaking technology like UFOs on Earth. Subsequent analysis by Bergram and other researchers suggest that the same or similar ships are in orbit around the Sun, Jupiter, and Uranus. See, according to him, this is a this is a ship. One of the ways he was able to find out about this cross was because he had exclusive access to raw images. I wonder if this is it. Yeah, he calls them electromagnetic videos. John, it is. It was estimated that this giant object was over 2,000 miles long. Anyways, uh, I will leave a link to this article in the description. Now let's watch this one here. This is like I said, you know, this is where a couple hunters claim that, uh, that there's, yeah, this guy here is Bigfoot. Here we go. This is the this is the video right here. Look at that dude. I'm, I'm surprised that um, he's he's in such a wide open space. And you know, yeah, I'm I'm a definite believer in Bigfoot. I am. I heard one lecture given by someone who's done who's done a lot of research on these Bigfoots, and according to him. Uh, he knows of four distinct species of Bigfoot. You know, there's there's all the you know, there's the Yeti, the white ones that uh, occupy occupy more snowy regions. And you know, something um, like one of the first times a a Bigfoot was spotted was by um, a couple guys way up in the mountains, the you know snow and stuff like that, and the um, the idea that someone would fake a Bigfoot was kind of hard to be, you know, believe because if you take into consideration all the, the effort and money and resources it took for you know, these two guys to get up to such a remote um, part of a mountain, and then you know, if someone was going to hoax them, prank them, they would have to spend just as much time and resources, if not more, in order to, you know, prank someone way out in the wilderness. So that's why it's hard to like, to believe some of these sightings are, you know, people pranking or their hoaxes. 
But anyways, let's go to this next article. Yeah, NASA accepts and confirms the existence of UFOs throughout history. Finally, NASA confirms the existence of UFOs throughout the history of mankind in a bomb document published on their website. The author of the document, entitled Unidentified Flying Objects in Classical Antiquity, says that the ancient observers of strange objects seen in the sky could not assign natural causes. A small number of optical phenomena and flying objects seen by antique people in the sky have natural causes like sun and moon eclipses, the emergence of new stars and comets. The author of the document says that at least some of the strange aerial phenomena seen in antiquity are similar to the UFO phenomenon of our day. My opinion is that most of the phenomena in antiquity have natural causes and only those that defy any conventional scientific explanation of all reports who defy any logic after careful analysis can be interpreted as being similar to today's UFO. Yeah, so 217 BC in Arpa, round shields, parmas were seen in heaven. 212 BC in Riate, a giant stone was seen flying in that area. 173 BC in Lanuvium, a show of a large fleet was seen in the sky. You see, like I've said before, you know, we have been seeing UFOs for literally thousands of years and they're not all visiting. For sure, some of them are coming from faraway galaxies. Some of them are coming from, you know, different dimensions, the future, wherever. You know, it could be, it could be any number of places, but I don't think... Yeah, well, it's hard to deny that all of the UFOs we see aren't from this planet. You know, it, yeah, the fact that we see so many UFOs coming in and out of our oceans and lakes would indicate to me that that is most likely where they have their bases and civilizations. And, you know, and the fact that we haven't explored 95% of our ocean floor, or the floor of the ocean, 95%. You know, I don't know if that's by design or choice. You know, I mean, I, you know, are we have we been told that we we can't go to those areas? I don't know. I'd sure like to find out. But anyways, let me go to this uh, this last one. This is just a uh, uh, image of um, commonly reported UFO types. Note: these drawings are. Hypothetical constructions generalized from hundreds of UFO reports. They are intended to indicate basic shapes which have been reported and are not necessarily completely accurate in every detail. Additional details sometimes reported, such as portholes, projections, body lights, etc., are not portrayed. The general types shown do represent with reasonable accuracy virtually all UFOs which have been reliably described in any detail. Examples of each type appear in the left-hand column. Flat disc, dome disc, Saturn disc, flattened sphere. Hmm, uh, which one of these is, would be considered the TikTok, I wonder? And, you know, I've also heard some people theorize that the reason why um, there are so many similar shapes but different shapes is because that, you know, that the different species that exist on the planet uh, are using different types of tech or different levels of technology. You know, some, some of the alien craft or some of the alien species have, have craft where if they want to land on a planet, you know, they have to land the craft on the planet and then they, you know, send out or open the doors and they walk out. Um, other species have craft where they can um, be float down, you know, and, and then and others have um, have the technology where they can travel interdimensionally or they can appear and disappear wherever they want. It's, uh, yeah, different levels of uh, intelligence and technology. And also this uh, this last one also just shows um, some flight patterns, characteristic flight patterns. Yeah, you know, and from my understanding, like th this pendulum motion, I mean, this is caused by they have some type of energy source which locks into a um an area of space and and then they basically you know um move like a pendulum because yeah they, they have the ability to 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 lock you know a, a, a lock the ship into a certain portion of skate of space but then the ship still you know um has has some some lateral movement that it isn't necessarily secure 
But anyways, um, that is going to be it for this video. If you like things like this, please give this video a thumbs up. Please share this video. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'll have more things like this. Take care.